it's been a while. And with the 2023 season of events coming, it's time to catch up on the competitive scene. It was a lengthy couple of years without any major events and a lot of stagnation or even backwards movement. But the competitive scene for our hobby has been expanding quickly in the last year. So much so, it could be difficult to keep track of, and I wanted to bring things together for everyone to look forward to in 2023 into one video. So let's start with three events that are going to be running game types that have evolved and grown off of each other, originating from Quick Flag in Singapore and adapting multiple times before getting to where these are today but I'll save the history of competitive blaster tag for another video. These three events are all using rule sets that I would classify as flag push style games. Whether they've evolved to no longer use flags or not, they share a common concept that has been tailored to fit the organizer's views and experience for things like balance, game flow, and time restrictions. Rather than getting bogged down in detailed rules analysis for every single game type in this video, we're gonna stay mostly surface level with the goal of informing about what's out there. Full rules for every game type discussed in this video will be linked below though if they're available. The common ties between all these flag push style rules are that they are round based matches with no respawns in each round. And there is either a physical object that each team will try to bring to their opponent's spawn zone, a buzzer to hit in the opposing spawn, or just running a body through that spawn to score and complete a round. There are variations between the names and rules of each event that is running this foundation for their game type that will give each a distinct feel or meta to adjust to that makes them their own. But at their core, they share some basic concepts that should allow for players to grasp them and adjust quickly. And with that preface for this batch of events, let's lead with the most recent major tournament, which is the Foam Pro Tour, or FPT, now known as the DZPT, or Dart Zone Pro Tournament. This was a tournament that held four qualifiers prior to the main event in Florida, New Jersey, California, and where the main event was held in New York. The eight qualifying teams competed for a prize pool of over 10k using a collection of Dart Zone Pro Blasters in the main event matches. Both the qualifiers and the main event used a game type called Senzone, which was a change from the Ion Rush game type at the previous FPT in 2019. This is the first tournament our hobby has had with a qualifier system, which is something I think we'll see more and more of as the hobby continues to grow and more teams form in each region. If you want a thorough breakdown on the tournament and qualifiers as a whole, I'll link Link to a video down below that goes into far more detail than I have time for in this video. Details are still yet to be announced for the 2023 tournament, so we're gonna have to wait and see for any potential changes from the 2022 rules and qualifying circuit. Historically, the event that this tournament is attached to, End War, is run in June or July, so it's probably safe to assume that it will be held around the same time again this year as well. Now, if we switch over to talking about an up and coming competitive format, at, Speed Dart has been on the rise since the second half of last year. Based in Singapore through the company Black Raisins, they're working on expanding into as many countries as they can, with multiple groups here in the US already. I can't speak for the plans of organizers in other countries for Speed Dart, but I know there have been events running in Singapore, and the US hosts are currently running clinics to not only get players acclimated to competitive, which is awesome, but also to test and adjust the game rules to improve the format for their major two-day tournament on June 3rd and 4th of the this year in Clifton, New Jersey. And while we're still waiting on full details on their tournament, I'm hopeful they won't keep us waiting too long. One of the most interesting and appealing aspects of this to me, as I just mentioned, is the move to a two-day tournament. This allows for the potential to have a more thorough tournament with more overall matches than a single-day tournament could, as every other major tournament has been prior in our hobby, a single-day event. If this is run smoothly and well-received, I would love to see more multi-day tournaments in the future. Future. But Speed Dart isn't even the freshest option around. Another new event for 2023, Maryland Mayhem, has released
released the rules for their tournament on April 14th. This inaugural event will feature a tournament with their Flag Dash rule set. Because this tournament is paired with other games across a weekend, like End War or Ragnar Oktoberfest, we could see a solid tournament of teams for their first running. That's a point I think shouldn't be underappreciated here. One of the biggest things we can do as a community is create more opportunities for people to try the competitive side of our hobby. I know I just said I wanted to potentially see more two-day tournaments, and that's true, but having tournaments attached to events with a variety of games is a great way to get people involved when they otherwise may not have given it a chance. And that should never be completely removed, as accessibility has major value in helping this side of our hobby grow. So I love that this tournament and event as a whole is coming into existence this year. Now, if we move on to games that are a bit different from those flag push style games, we have to start with Nerf Ball, which is expected to have a tournament in the summer of 2023, if the promotional material that was put out is to be believed. We still don't know much about the rules of Nerf Ball, but from the teaser video, it's a 4v4 format where scoring appears to be similar to basketball in that there's a ball and a hoop that teams are trying to get the ball into. So if we follow the point I was just making though about how events can grow the scene for us, an official Hasbro run tournament has massive potential to indirectly bring more players to other tournaments that may not have otherwise known that competitive blaster tag even existed. If they market and run this event well, it could be a significant step in bringing the next generation of competitors in, so I'm very hopeful that it'll be a success. What is likely to be the last tournament that finishes the year out, the Ragnar Oktoberfest King of the Hill tournament will be taking place in mid-October in San Jose, California, if previous year's trends are to be followed. I can speak a bit more to this game type in rule set as it's the one I've been working on personally for years now. It's King of the Hill with three hill points, 5v5 teams, in and it respawns, games that last six minutes with no stops or rounds, and the team with the most accumulated time across all three hill points wins the match. Full rules and field layout should be posted in April, giving six months of time for teams to prep. Until then, we'll be running some test games to revisit rules and layouts to make any adjustments necessary for balance. While that rounds out the major tournaments we can expect this year in North America, it by no means is the entirety of the competitive scene. This doesn't account for anything overseas. There's so much I didn't get to talk about in this video, like the Boil League of Tags yearly event that in time could become a major tournament in the Midwest, which very much should have more representation for how the active that region is. Getting things away from just the East Coast and West Coast is fantastic. And there's leagues all over that are furthering Blaster Tag as a whole. You've got Blast League and Panhandle Dart League in Florida, Space City Foam in Texas, Impact Dart League in Georgia, formerly known as Atomic Dart League, United Nerf Ops in New Jersey, San Diego Nerf Club in California, and so many more. This foundation is how the competitive scene grows from the ground up. So to anyone that is hosting or organizing on any level, Thank you for your time and effort to building something that will help improve our hobby for the future. Now, with so much going on to look forward to, it's hard to not believe that 2023 has the potential to be the best year yet for Blaster Tag.